On the most holy day, we light four candles of our Advent wreath. We are reminded of the expectation, preparation, proclamation, and revelation of his coming. Now, as we light the Christ candle, we rejoice that the promise of God has been fulfilled in the coming of the baby born in the manger. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service as we celebrate Christ is come. The scripture lesson for today is Luke 2, 1 through 7, and I'm reading out of the New Revised Standard Version. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken where, well, Quinarius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was a descendant from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and lay him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. The word of God for the people of God. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm Pastor Maurice Horn, and I serve as the pastor here at St. Paul United Methodist Church. I welcome you to our Christmas Eve worship service, and I welcome those who are worshiping with us online, and I thank you for joining us. Looking at the scriptures that was read this evening, for a subject I would like to use, make room for Jesus. A Roman census was periodically taken to assess the taxation and to discover those who was eligible for military services. Because the Jews were exempt from military services, the census was predominantly taken for the purpose of taxation. And we see the writer of Luke portraying Christ as the Messiah the promised descendant of David who would save God's people. In the book of Micah, it was prophesied that Jesus was born, would be born in Bethlehem of Judea. Jesus was born in David's hometown of Bethlehem. And as the prophet Micah predicted, out of Bethlehem shall come forth um, one who is ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from eternity. Luke tells us that Mary and Joseph lived in Nazareth, which was about 80 miles from Bethlehem. Luke gives the circumstances that caused Mary and Joseph to return to Bethlehem to be able to fulfill the prophecy. Luke tells us that Jesus is the Messiah from the family line of David. As it neared the time for Mary to have the baby, then it was destined for her to make it to Bethlehem so the baby can be born there fulfilling prophecy. It's possible that God caused a census to be taken which would give them a reason they had to go back for the purpose of the census. Now the journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem was about 80 miles. And back in the first century, they didn't have automobiles like we have. They couldn't jump in a car and just go on a smooth ride. They did their traveling by foot or on an uh, animal. And to travel 80 miles by an animal, you can only imagine the toll that it took on Mary. Nine months pregnant, making that journey. Whether it's on an animal or whether it's on foot, you can imagine her back is hurting. Pain is taking place. Um, she's not feeling comfortable. Her legs is tired. She's feeling labor pains happening within her body. But when they got there, because the census 
had called everybody to come back. The place was so crowded, there was no room for them. There was no stall for them to be able to have privacy while she bring birth to the savior of the world. Now accommodations for travelers were very primitive back then. An inn was like a series of stalls um, with an opening that led to a big opening in the center of the courtyard. In our language today, that would be like cubicles. We have cubicles separating where people can be separated from everyone. And if this sanctuary was be compared to that, then there would be cubicles all alongside the wall, all the way around the sanctuary. And then in the middle, there would be a place for the horses to be able to be put at, for the uh, water trough, and for all the food for the horses to be in the middle. Well, when Jesus and Mary, when Mary and Joseph got there, all the stalls was full. There was no place for them to go into the stall so they can have privacy. And because of that, Jesus was born in a common area in the center of the, of, of the stall where all the horses and everything was at. As a matter of fact, Jesus was born in a horse's trough, water trough. He was, that was his bed because there was no place else for him. And I can imagine if the people knew that this was the son of God being brought forth into this world, they would all have been running saying, you can have my stall, you can have my stall, you can have my stall. But because they did, was not aware that this was the savior of the being born into this world, Jesus didn't get none of their stalls. Mary birthed Jesus in the center courtyard because there was no room for him in the end. You know, it's amazing, even today, People are busy. They go to work. They have schedule on top of schedule on top of schedule. Someone say, you, 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 you've been to church? or No, I ain't got time. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. And around Christmas, we really get busy. But you know, it would be wonderful, no matter how busy you are, take a little time and make room for Jesus. You know, we go about every day, and we eat meals certain times of the day and it's amazing we can go all day long and realize the day is almost gone and we say oh my god i haven't eaten anything i gotta go get me something to eat i tell you it would be wonderful if by the end of the day we come to our senses and say "Woo! i haven't even read the bible today let me read a chapter let me read a verse I haven't prayed today. Let me pray. As I see so many things going on in the world, I need to pray. And we all need to pray every day. We all need to make room for Jesus. No matter how busy our schedule may be, take a little time out for Jesus. All of us has heard the Christmas story about the birth of Christ. We read it in the Bible. We read it in magazines, newspapers, watch it on television. Christmas movies attempt to explain the birth of Christ. But the story of the birth of Christ is a lot more than just an average story. Because it's a story that tells us about God who loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, come to this earth, wrapped up in swaddling clothes, born in a manger so that he can be the savior of the world. You know the amazing part of it? If Jesus had been born in royalty, then poor folks would have said, Jesus can't relate with me. He don't understand what it means to be poor. But because he was born in a manger, wrapped up in swaddling clothes, he can relate to everyone and anyone. He died on the cross and arose from the grave for everybody, the entire universe. This is a story that just has to be told. You see, Christmas is more than just decorating a Christmas trees. And we can ride around and see some beautiful Christmas trees. But Christmas is more than just decorating Christmas trees. It's more than just buying gifts for the family. More than singing carols. Christmas is about celebrating the birth of Christ. Jesus was born for a purpose. And we celebrate that purpose on Christmas during the Christmas season. 
And Christmas Eve, we come together to celebrate the purpose, to sing the song, joy to the world. The Lord has come. Oh, that's joy. Christmas is noted as the busiest time of the year. People who have money, they're out buying gifts for their friends and their loved ones. And people who don't have money is out trying to find some place that's giving some food away, that's giving some toys away, and trying to find a ride to get there. Well, we're busy, but let's take time for Jesus. Christmas is about sharing love because God shared his love with us. Christmas is a time to celebrate the greatest gift in the world, the greatest gift from God, the birth of the Son of God. I tell you, we have to celebrate the birth of Christ and remember that the birth of Christ is something to be celebrated. Christmas is a time to instill hope in us. In the midst of looking at the news, the news sometimes is so depressing, people don't look at the news no more. But in the midst of war, in the midst of crime, in the midst of all the killing and bad things that's going on, there's hope in this world because of Jesus. I remember the song that said, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives, because I know who holds the future. And life is worth living just because he lives. You see, Jesus has made it possible so that everybody would know about how they can get in the right relationship with God. How they can make it to heaven. See, people get confused today in the religious world because everybody is saying something different. The Baptists are saying, I am the way. The Catholics are saying, I am the way. The Pentecostals are saying, I am the way. The Methodists are saying, I am the way. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You see, it doesn't matter what church you attend. Just make sure you are following Jesus. Because of the birth of Jesus Christ, we can celebrate because of the love of Christ, we can have peace. You see, we can have peace in the midst of turmoil because we know the Prince of Peace come to this earth to bring peace. He has shown his love to mankind by dying on the cross and arising from the grave. You see, because of the birth of Christ, we have love. One thing about love, love is a verb. Love has action in it. You see, when someone say they love you, they got to show some love. One thing about God, God showed his love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Love will motivate you to do something. I remember hearing a story long ago of a husband and wife, they always gave each other secret gifts for Christmas. But this one Christmas came along and both of them had been through some hard times financially and neither one of them had any money. The wife, she had long hair, long, beautiful hair, but she didn't have a comb, so she combed her hair with her fingers. And the husband always wanted to be able to buy her a comb one day. The husband had a watch that was passed on to him by his father. But the watch, he didn't have a chain for that watch. And he always would pull the watch out to put it back in his pocket. And a couple of times he almost dropped it and he fumbled it and was catching it because he did not want to break that watch. So in the wife's mind, she said she was going to get him a chain for that watch. And the husband mind said he going to get her a comb for her hair. Sure enough, when it came Christmas Day, the wife, she gave him a chain, a beautiful chain to put on his watch. Oh, he was so happy. But then he paused. He said, but honey, what happened to all your long hair? All your hair is cut off. She said, well, I didn't have no money and I had an opportunity to cut my hair and sell it. 
so that I could buy you a chain to put on your watch. And he just started crying. She said, well, what's wrong? He said, I don't have a watch no more. I went and sold my watch so that I could have the money to buy you a comb to comb your hair. And they both started crying and hugging one another because they realized and recognized that it was love they had for each other that caused them to sell something very precious of theirs. And they were still happy. Even though she had combs, time will come and hair will grow back. Even though he had a chain, the time will come he'll get a watch again. But it was love that motivated them. And because of that love of Jesus Christ, we should try to start trying to love people. People that we don't know. We should try to love everyone. Try to show our love by what we do. In Christmas time, people do all kind of things to show their love. Somebody was telling me about a story just the other day that the family did not know how they was going to survive for Christmas because work was not going good and money was really short. But they signed up in September to be adopted. And sure enough, Taco Bell adopted them, that family. And they got all kind of toys this Christmas, all kind of food this Christmas. The kids were just so happy this Christmas because somebody loved them. Amen. We have to start displaying that love because God showed his love to us. Let us start showing love to one another. Someone might ask the question, say, was, well, was Jesus born on December 25th? Guarantee you he was not. But thank God he was born. We don't know the exact date, but we don't want to pinpoint the exact date. We just want to pinpoint the fact that he was born. And because he was born, he came to this world so that he can be the savior of this world. And thank God for that. And we don't have to wait till December 25th to celebrate his birth. We can celebrate it all year long. We're talking about making room for Jesus. When we hear the Christmas story, then we should hear the Christmas story all the way from the manger to the cross, from angelic visions to resurrection life and beyond into the life of the Spirit of Christ at the work in the world today. If we are to worship the infant Jesus, we must follow him from Bethlehem to Golgotha, where he died on the cross and arose from the grave, taking up our own unique ways of participating in his saving work. Following his path of devotion to love and justice, encountering the powers of evil in the world and in ourselves, unmasking their lies and pretense, and in the midst of it all, celebrating the ultimate victory that was his and one day will be all who dare to follow him. The true beauty of the coming of the Savior lives in the lives he's touched and inspired to repent and follow him. And the Bible would tell us that Emmanuel means God with us. That means God is with us right now, today. God will be with us tomorrow. And God will be with us the next day. And just knowing that God is with us will give us the strength, to give us the courage, to give us the tenacity to face another day because God is with us. Make room for Jesus because Jesus made room for you. God bless you. Amen. There are four ways you can contribute to this ministry. You can place an offering in the plate as you enter or leave the building. You can give by text. You can click on Donate Now button at the website or mail your check directly to the church. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit Rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen, amen. and Amen. Merry Christmas. You are dismissed. Go in peace. Merry Christmas.